The 1998 Mars launch opportunity was greeted by Mars scientists with excitement and expectation. Five spacecraft, four from the United States and one from Japan, were ready to voyage to Mars to begin the next phase of exploration. Instead of continuing the line of successes started by Mars Global Surveyor and Mars Pathfinder, this opportunity saw the loss of all four spacecraft from the United States and the near loss of the Japanese mission. In 1998, the United States was aggressively moving ahead with exploration of Mars under the NASA mantra at the time, faster, better, cheaper. Building on past success and experience, NASA planned to fly two spacecraft, Mars Climate Orbiter and Mars Polar Lander, at a cost scarcely more than that of Mars Pathfinder and less than 10% that of Viking. Yet they were a full science mission containing all the elements of Viking. Mars Climate Orbiter and Mars Polar Lander were built under NASA's Mars Surveyor Program. Mars Polar Lander carried two microprobe and hard landers built under NASA's Deep Space Technology Program to Mars. Was it asking too much to fly four spacecraft to Mars at this tiny cost? After all, half of the spacecraft sent to Mars failed, and each had cost many times more than those planned in 1998. Exploring Mars is very difficult and requires attention to every detail. Could all the details be covered under such a modest budget? Was a cheap approach tempting the great galactic ghoul? The answer came soon. In October 1998, a navigation error caused the Mars Climate Orbiter to be inserted into orbit nearly 100 kilometers too low. As a result, Mars Climate Orbiter either burned up in the atmosphere or skipped off the top of the atmosphere into orbit around the sun. The root cause of the error was reported as a failure to convert English to metric units between flight teams. Following close behind, Mars Polar Lander, carrying the two Deep Space Two probes, prepared for its controlled plunge to the surface. The plan for Mars Polar Lander to jettison the probes shortly before entering the atmosphere and soft land in a manner similar to Viking landings. In December 1998, shortly before deploying the probes and entering the atmosphere, Mars Polar Lander sent its last signal. It then turned its heat shield towards Mars and radio antenna away from Earth, preparing for entry into the atmosphere. At the time of the turn, all systems were go. Controllers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory waited for the signal to come from the surface that the landing had gone well. None came. To the distress of the controllers, none came from the probes either. The lander and the probes had all failed. Though it is not conclusively known why the lander failed, later analysis found that the small rocket motors designed to lower Mars polar lander gently, the last 30 to 50 meters to the surface did not fire. The Deep Space Two probes were also silent. Why these probes also failed is a mystery. Perhaps the failure of all three provides a valuable clue. Were their failures in some way connected? The United States was not the only nation to launch a mission to Mars during the 1998 launch opportunity. The Japanese Nozomi Hope mission was launched from Kagoshima Space Center on the 3rd of July 1998 to study the atmosphere of Mars. But trouble started early in the mission. The initial propulsion burn and correction intended to send Nozomi in the proper trajectory to Mars failed due to a sticky valve in the propulsion system. Quick action by the mission planners put the spacecraft on a new trajectory that changed the cruise time from approximately one year to four years. A fortunate save 
and a small price to pay considering the potential return. And those were the missions to Mars in 1998. Have a great day.